Hello everyone and we hope you're doing really well. We're cracking on with our combined arms in DCS World Series, the naval assets. We're looking today at the Chinese type 052B destroyer. We've got a 052B and a 05C. Today is the B. We're going to go through it. We're going to look at its various statistics and technical abilities. We're then going to go and drive it, sail it in DCS and shoot things down and then have a bit of a summary. So NATO, uh, uh, my pronunciation of Chinese is going to be even worse than my Russian, but we'll give it a go. NATO is the Yu Yang 1 class destroyer. <clears throat> class details. The 051B class was intended to be equipped with a phase array radar and HHQ-9, which is a successor to the HHQ-7, which we've just done a video on, long-range missiles. However, these were not ready when that class was being built, resulting in the Chinese needing to buy four Russian Sovereigny class destroyers instead. Lessons learned from those ships enabled the Chinese to build the 052B class with Russian equipment installed such as the Fugrat, the top plate, that's a radar, and the 9M317 Chatil, uh, so anti-aircraft missile, commonly known or a derivative of the Book launcher, if you remember SA-11, uh, otherwise uh, reporting named Gollum, medium-ranged missiles while using many other Chinese-made systems. This class gave the Chinese a major boost in air defense with a stealthy frame. It has been compared on occasions with the, sovereign, the Russian sovereign money class. DCS-specific info, i.e. the one that we get. Type 052 Gangzhou Destroyer, NATO reporting name Yuyang-1. Uh, shipyard is uh, Ying Yang, uh, Shanghai. Yard number is unknown. We get hull number 168. Oh, I'm not going to try and pronounce it again. It was laid down year 2000, so it's one of the most modern ships in DCS. Uh, it was launched in 2002 and commissioned in 2004. So it's 15 years old now, which isn't very long for a ship. Oh, I should say Daishi's with us today. He's actually done all the work here. I'm just reading things out. Say hello, Daishi. Hello. Um, at this point, anything else? Um, how many hull numbers do we have in the 52B class? Did you know? We have two. So just two boats? Wow. Yep, it quickly, uh, wait, we're in, when they were getting the Bs out, they started building Cs, so it's like yeah. the tech came out just soon as they were starting to build these. So this is a stopgap ship, isn't it? Yep. I'll jump. Okay. General characteristics, we get to the interesting bit, the displacement, it's a destroyer. Um, so it's a uh, full tonnage, is 7,000 tonnes, uh, which is in the destroyer range, obviously. Length, 155 metres. Beam, 70 metres, and a draft of 6 metres. Speed, maximum, 29 knots, which is mm, pretty good. Average, uh, sorry, scratch, range is at cruise, diesel cruise, of 4,500 miles, and a crew complement of 280 engineering we've got a combined diesel gas system i didn't really used to understand what this mean what it means is you've got different engines in there uh, in this case you've got diesel engine and you've got gas engines and this is typical of a modern uh, a modern ship it's uh, the reason is different engines optimized better for different things a diesel excellent economy great for cruising so you have the diesel engine or two diesels here shang zai 12v 1163tb eight three diesels at a total of uh, 9,800 shaft horsepower uh, it would use them for cruising at 15 knots if uh, it was in battle or had to go at the 30 knots 29 knots it turns on its gas turbines instead and we've got two times Zuria mass broked DN80 gas turbines giving a uh, gross 36,300 shaft horsepower so two shafts likely to be variable pitch propellers anything else about the engineering Daishi? Um, yeah, with this one, uh, you get to choose between one or the other. Some of them will say uh, code DAG, which means and. This one's or, so you have to choose instead of being able to run them all. Yeah, makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Okay, next we get to the electronics. It's a modern ship. It's going to have decent uh, electronics, a lot of it Russian, uh, as we've talked about. Primary radar, Fregat MAE-5, NATO reporting name, top plate, a range of up to 300 kilometres more or less, and up to, I always get this wrong, 90,000 feet, I think that is. Uh, it's a Russian export 3D search radar, detects planes up to 230 kilometres, missiles up to 50 kilometres. Uh, really top stuff, a search radar is like 
um, a radar in uh, the kind of planes that we fly, except it has the extra third dimension. You only actually get two dimensions in a plane. The third dimension is actually a separate scan that you have to do, a separate little uh, uh, output and input, whereas this can do it all in one scan, 3D radar, it's far superior. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, we've got a Type 366 Bandstand NATO reporting name. This is the Chinese variant of the Mineral ME we've seen on the Russian ships we've done. Surface search radars in a raid dome. Detect surface to surface missiles at 20 to 35 kilometers. So we'll hopefully see it shooting down some missiles today. We'll have to see how that works. Um, of that, an active element with a range of 65 kilometers active radar component has over the horizon ability which i've still not figured out how that works but one day we'll figure it out as a passive element up to 185 kilometers passive targeting over the horizon radar and it can do elint so collection of uh, passive radar data and a data link element nato reporting name light bulb 185 clicks data link antenna part of the bandstand so it can source information from other ships and get a picture or even other airplanes and get a picture of uh, what's over the horizon also we've got a type 3 i mean these these modern ships they are peppered i mean even the old world war ii ships when you read about them are peppered in radars uh, some of them um this is obviously no different we've got a type 364 seagull charlie 200 meters to 130 kilometers primary 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 for the 730 seawiz which we'll talk about in a bit uh, can also be used for air and surface-to-surface -surface missile search. Plenty of redundancy in here. Next is the Type 344. It's a later reporting name, Rice Lamp. Yes, I know that's weird. Uh, 200 metres to uh, 28 kilometres. Uh, fire control radar for the HP J87 gun. Also has laser range finder and TV tracker. Next we have the four times... Mike Romeo 90 front dome up to 75 kilometers used likely used for the uh, the missiles the air to air missiles that we're talking about the uh, the book variants uh, fire control radar next two times type 347 golf race bowl range 75 kilometers radar used for the again for the type 730 uh, sea wizards uh, and it's actually placed on those sea wizards units Next, two times OFC3, no reporting name, unknown range. Electro optical fire control for the C uh, for the 730 Seawiz. So if you're not using radar for whatever reason, like a lot of the Russian stuff or just a lot of the stuff in general, you have redundancy uh, electro optical. Yeah, it also works really nice for if you get jammed heavily, you still got something to fall back on. Mm hmm. You still got decent range on it as well. Um, two times type 756 fin curve mod don't understand that but okay um, which is 400 meters to uh, 46 kilometers navigation radar used by both civilian and military well the MGK 335 MS-E no NATO reporting name 30 kilometers on usage active passive sonar has comms ability detects subs up to an equal to 12 kilometers and torpedoes up to 2 kilometers uh, active pass active passes yeah right okay um is this in-house only or do we have the uh, toad ability uh this one as far as i can tell does not have a toad array at all understood um must be a reason for it uh we've got hrjz726 unknown range it's electronic warfare suite consisting of ecm and esm systems uh ecm electric countermeasures esm please explain doishi uh, that is electronic support measures. Uh, you use that to like listen on radio signals, and then you can try to uh, figure out what they are. Like if it sounds like it's a search radar, you identify it as like ELINT, or if it sounds like it's being used for communications, you interpret it as like comment or SIGINT or something like that. Roger. Okay. Uh, the suite consists of one type. 726-1 ESM and radar, a 726-2 ESM only, a 726, sorry if I'm saying them wrong, 3 ECM combined system, a 7265 ESM equipment export name SRW210A. Uh, we have 4 times 18 type 726-4 motorized countermeasure launchers, it uses flares, chaff, smokescreen and acoustic jamming. Anything you want to say about that? 
Yeah, the acoustic jammer, that's, uh, you throw that in the water and you're using that against torpedoes. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so that's active, active jamming, roger. Uh, we've got a ZKJ-5 combat control system, first, which is the first Chinese control system to have an open distributed architecture. Now, I don't know what that means. Can you go over that quickly, please? Um, from what I can gather, because like, part of that was Google Translate, uh -huh. thank you, um, it sounds like it's sort of like Aegis, yeah. where you're able to share data everywhere as needed. That's exactly what it sounds like to me as well, yep. Right, um, the most fun bit, the uh, the guns or armament. So, we've got primary here, anti-aircraft. We've got two times, are these arm launchers? Uh, yes, they are armed, uh, just one. Right, so we've got arm launchers, so we don't have a VLS in this, which is maybe a little bit strange. I guess maybe it's just not big enough for VLS, but okay. Um, 3S-90, 24 uh, each. Uh, this is the SAN 7C Gullum, or you know, similar to the book, the SA11 that we're used to in DCS on the ground. Range is, um, is, uh, is this a mistype? Is it meant to say 20 miles? Or have I misread that? Um, no, that's uh, 30 kilometers the air, 20 kilometers against missiles. Right, sorry, yeah, absolutely. And it's about just over 20 miles, as we know in, in DCS uh, for the ground one. So, yeah, that matches up with that. Yep, fine. Payload um, is a 70, really 70 kilo warhead. I mean, it's a big missile. I didn't know it was that big. Awesome. God, no wonder they're so dangerous. Uh, possibly high explosive threat. Yeah, that's likely. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so, actually, that's not true. <laughs> Sorry, I get trouble all the time. It will not be HE frag. It will be. Uh, I'm not going to try and say it, but yeah. Anyway, um, notes, uses um, the 9. M317 still export of the SA17 missile. Fire rate is unknown. Arms are usually 20 to 30 second reload, something like that, would you say? It, it depends how you design it. This could be a little more efficiently designed, but it still might not be able to outspeed a VLS. Yeah, absolutely. So we can expect some rough, fairly slow firing from this. Uh, we've got four times four. YJ83, I remember these because we've studied these before. Uh, uh, CSSN8, we no, can't work out how to pronounce that. Sakade is what I'm going to call it today. A range of 180 kilometers uh, with a two, nearly 200 kilo HE frag. Uh, it's an anti surface uh, warfare sea skimming missile. It's like a harpoon. Um, and it seems to have similar characteristics to a harpoon, roughly about the same range, same warhead. Um, and even uh, physically they look the same as the harpoons or similar. So, um, yeah, similar capability. We've got two times oh, yeah. sent. Oh, yeah, one other thing to note about it is, is that it actually bears similar... It looks just like an exoset, but it internally it's not. Roger, understood. Yeah. Okay, I mean, the Chinese, as we know, do have a habit of copying other missiles, but it seems that this is standalone. Uh, kind of. They probably just use the frame and then just design the innards themselves or got it from tech from somewhere else. I'm not sure. Roger. Okay. I just don't know a lot about it, really. Uh, we've got a couple of Type 30 Sea uh, 1 to 5 kilometers, max 3 kilometers. They get armor, armor piercing because uh, you can use these against the ground uh, or ships even. Um, frag, high explosive armor piercing, training. Uh, so seven barrel, thirty mil sea whiz. It's a real beast with variable RPM based on the German goalkeeper. So we'll try and get shot by those today. We've got one times one HP J eighty seven, uh, which is the it's the gun, uh, six kilometer effective, eight k max range. We notice it's a very low range. I'm not sure why that is, uh, but anyway, there you go. Uh, we we expect probable as usual HP frag, uh, general purpose, and an anti air radio prox fuse for anti air use. Uh, 10 to 90 RPM, um, 100 mil gun was noted to have jamming issues. Have we seen this gun anywhere else, or is this specific Chinese? Um, I think it's just specific to more Chinese. More Uh, next, two times three of 324mm torpedo tubes firing the YU-7. It can attack 10 kilometers, 43 knots, 45 kilos of a high explosive. Based on the Italian ET-5-2 and the US Mark 46 Mod 1 and 2 with a max depth of 400 meters. Now, unfortunately, we can't use torpedoes in DCS, but we can show the rest off. 
Uh, we also have 2 times 12, uh, so 12 barrels of type 75, 12 plus 24 each, with a maximum range of 4 kilometers. Um, I'm trying to describe what this is going to be. Like, like a mort anti submarine mortar, isn't it? Yep, uh, you just fire rockets like a mortar, and mm. you try to get it out of range, and then uh, depth charges take over. Roger, uh, we've got 90 kilo warheads. It's a Russian-style ASW uh, rocket launcher, uh, anti-submarine warfare lo rocket launcher. We'll show you that in a bit. Next aircraft can carry one helicopter, which can be a KA-28C Helix A, range of 200 kilometers, speed of that. And that with a cargo of five tons appears to be a modification made by the Chinese has a magnetic anomaly detector or possible towed sonar array options. So go, go ahead and search for submarines. Possible loadouts for this, it can be two YU-7s, uh, because they're relatively small caliber um, size torpedoes, and we've talked about that already. Or 1624 Sono boys for underwater detection. Uh, we can data link with the mothership, which is cool, or depth charges for the same thing. So it's an anti-submarine helicopter plus general purpose. Or we can have a Z9C, which I've never heard of before, Haytan. Um, Dolphin, is that? Yep. Uh, which has, well, uh, 7,000 kilometers uh, at that max speed, base Z9. Uh, some are French Dolphin based, some are Black Panther variations, a surface search radar, interesting. Toad Ray sonar, uh, imitations of that, what that's known as uh, Lil, not Lil, what's it known as? God, I've forgotten. Lamps. Yeah, that's a uh, Tactaz. Um, yeah, that Toad Array is something that you'd see more on ships and maybe the Lamp system. Roger. It is passive only, so don't expect a penguin. Okay, gotcha. Can data link with the um, YJ-83 anti-surface warfare missiles mid-flight. What would that be for? So you could guide it from the helicopter or assist information or... It yeah, it's sort of like the shipwrecks from the last time where you could just data link it and try to give it... try to update it mid-flight. Yeah, so you could have this, this helicopter flying, you know, 200 kilometers away near a baddy ship. And, yeah, I get it. Cool. Uh, and equipped with cannon and or searching targeting pods. Some have searchlights and forward-looking infrared for search and rescue. Possible loadouts. Soda boys, 12 passive, 4 active, 1 seawater temp, 1 marine environment options, or 2 torpedoes, or 2 uh, variation of the torpedo. Um, right, we're getting there. Uh, notes, uh, that, that'll be for you, Daishi. Yeah, the ECM arrangement. I put that here as a note for me, trying to remember how the... Antennas are arranged because I'm sure if you noticed with the uh, the system up there, there's a lot of code names or well type names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Roger. Um, I'm just gonna and, carry on. and the other part is is that I made a note in there like trying to find Chinese ships. I noticed there's been some incorrect information here and there, so just gotta be careful. Like there's one website that I find to be really reliable, but. It listed that it used uh, a radar it didn't, and uh, one of the ECMs, I don't even think exists or something like that, so be careful. Roger. Okay, images. We always like images. So we've got here, which is, this is a Chaffin Flare Launcher, and, and yep. Sonar Decoy and all that cool stuff, Roger. Uh, we've got the type... Uh, oh, so this is that countermeasure system in action with presumably flares. Wow. Um, yeah, using flares and smoke screen, I believe. Yeah, right, because if a Hornet, F-18 Hornet, came in and shot this with its AGM missiles, that's heat-based missile. The Was it the F, F variant, I think? I think, memory. So you're gonna put, it's going to put its flare out, and the missile's not going to work anymore. So, cool, right? Um, yeah. Uh, we've got a B partial system of identification. So where do we start? We've got the gun, the uh, 87 at the front there. We've got the... What was that? Yep, you're going right so far. Yeah, we've got the book uh, there, or the book variant. We've got the uh, the 726s, these guys here, there and there you can see, and probably have the other side there and there as well. Uh, we've got a Sea Wiz there uh, with its um, own radar, and it can also assist from other radars we've seen, one either side. And you can see there, yep, the 347G uh, fire control radar. Um, we've got the four cell of the anti ship missiles there, the harpoon likes as I like to call them. Uh, you got eight there and eight there. We've got the Chatil, uh more missiles of the same type. We've got two arm launchers, remember arm launcher one, arm launcher two there. 
they duck under the deck to to reload we've got the mr 90 front dome samfire control radar there and the other side we've got the sapcon antennas shown there we've got a type 364 sr64 surface search radar there we've got the big top plate there 3d search radar we've got the uh, 344 main gun fire control radar there uh, sugar, I've forgotten the code name for it, but yep. Uh, we've got the front dome, samfire control radars there and there and there and there. Uh, got the mineral ME bandstand. Um, does bandstand for the gun? Uh, that one's for the anti ship oh, missile. Sorry, I got confused. You could use it for a gun, maybe. No, it's all right. I just got confused that one there. Right, and the only one we didn't know were which ones we didn't know? Those two little, little ones there. Yeah, the one that's hiding underneath the 364. Yeah. yeah, so if anyone knows what they are, that's the only thing we can't figure out. Right, um, here's uh, Daiichi Sources. I thank for Daiichi to put in the time in as ever. We will link a copy of this. You can come and read it at your leisure, um, and we will correct it as we see fit uh, in the video description. Otherwise, the next thing to do is jump in DCS and go shooting tanks. Okay, we're in now. first thing we like to do is just go and view the ship, so stand by. And that is not our ship. That's another one. And there is our beautiful 52. This is what we call a high fidelity model. So it's it's a modern model that someone sat down and detailed really well. So we've gone through all the units. You can see that arm launcher there for the for the the book type missiles. Really big missiles, as you can see. See those various antennae. We've got the eight anti-ship missiles. Good, whoops, good level of detail there. I look forward to blowing these. And these are fairly dynamic um, damage models in these ships. You can blow bits of them off. You can blow the bridge off and then the bridge stops working. You can blow the seabiz off and the seabiz stop working. Uh, it's cool stuff. I wish they would go back and redo the Russian models, but it's a lot of work, obviously, to go and do that. looks like, um, if I zoom in here, um, stuff here for the electronic warfare. Would you agree, if you can see what I'm doing? Yep. Yeah, that's, uh, I believe that's where most of the two stuff is. Most the one on the top, I suspect it might have been part of 984, but this one looks different. I think they've upgraded it over time. Roger. Uh, we've got the, uh, this is the navigation radar here. This is a 3D search radar, and they always have this weird cocked kind of, um, you know, it's always on the, on the cock here. It's never straight. If anyone out there knows why that is, I'd, I'd be interested in that. You do uh, so also, the, uh, the little tall thing right behind top plate that's the uh, ESM antenna this here yep oh good work look we're getting yep, better that's each time. the one we're getting better each time well done um got two probably the comms these are gonna be comms aren't they these tall tall skinny aerials yeah here. they look like HF whips it looks like a ship's got a lot of them actually it's got mm. all over the back too it's got two chimneys and two vents. I was just wondering, probably unlikely. I wonder if that's, like, for instance, a diesel engine, diesel engine, gas engine, gas engine, or the other way around. It'd be interesting to know. I don't have a clue, obviously, but it's interesting. One other thing it could be is that could be end takes, or uh, if yeah. you're redirecting the exhaust, but I, I think those are end takes. Roger. We've got the um, countermeasures here. I don't think, I'm pretty sure the countermeasures don't work in DCS, which is a shame, because the ship, you know, sending out all those millions of flares would look awesome. Uh, it's just not that that level of detail there. Also one, thing, also, one thing you can notice from the model is, if you look at it, you can aim these ones, unlike some of the other ones, which are fixed angles. And one other thing I remember is, uh, these are the anti-submarine mortar-type rockets, aren't they? Yep. Cool. No, uh, that's it. I'm happy about it. It's a good ship. Um, uh, let's go and uh, shoot some stuff with it. So, the first thing is, let's go and control it, shall we? Let me just press F10. So, the first thing is escape. Choose Coalition Blue. We're going to be a Game Master or a Tactical Commander. I'll be a Game Master here. Okay, I'm now in control of that ship, so I click on that ship there. And first thing first, we want to move it. So, let's go set path there. Left click left click right click to confirm how many miles per hour and it's weird being miles per hour rather than not but it is let's put him onto his gas turbines and get him going now obviously things happen over a long period of time this is 7,000 tons so you have to be patient with them as well as that um, combined arms generally can be just a bit I don't know what the word is really awkward to use sometimes you have to give an order to a ship several times before it'll listen just something you get used to in combined arms um, they have a bit of a mind of their own. 
Off he goes. It's going to go follow those waypoints and then come to a stop. Mm, um, this is a useful ship because it has a gun on the front. So the next thing I really want to show is the gun. From combined arms, I can't use the missiles, uh, but I can use the gun. Uh, sorry, that's actually not true. So we'll, we'll go over that in a minute. Uh, I want to attack something. Uh, I know we're out of range at the moment, so there's no point of me attacking. What we're going to do is wait until we get in range of these guys here and put some shot down. Stand by. Okay, we're five miles away. We'll try and see if we can fire. Uh, we may or may not be able to at this range, so I'm going to put just a target in there. I'm going to watch him. Yeah, the gun's aiming, look. Okay. He's going to have a pop. Uh, and there we go. That's just a single shot. Far away, so it should be relatively accurate. And that bullet shouldn't take too long to get here, but we'll see what happens. It's only 100 mil. Boom! Exactly where I put it, look. Very good. Uh, so that's a way that I can control him to fire. If we go back to F10 here and go back to him, what we could do is uh, we can change his ROE here from fire, return fire, or hold. We'll keep it on fire. In this case, he'll see enemies whenever we get within uh, a few miles and shoot them himself. We will show that in a minute. Also, state green here. Uh, so, not a lot of battle stations. Or we can force red battle stations so we can fire straight away. Or we can automatic. I'm not actually sure what that does. And we can stop an attack at any time. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move the ship in close uh, for a, a close strafe along, along here. And we'll show it firing automatically. So, stand by. Okay, so he's at green battle stations. He's now going to red battle stations. Ooh, hoo, hoo, there's the Sea Wiz. 30 more 7 barreled. I guess the battle station is quickly this one. One of the things you can shoot guns and such without being at battle station, but it could be is it's got a better system on it. I guess it all depends on how they decide to simulate uh, red and green. Let's feel that. Oh, I guess. Pretty good damage. Yeah, for a little destroyer, it's kicking ass, man. Ooh, owie! That's done well, isn't it? Yeah. It's destroyed a brigade, brigade of light armor. Like, not as fast as Peter the Great, but it's doing a bit better than some of the other ships. Yeah, it was never going to be as good as Peter the Great. I don't think anything is really. No. Well, unless if they bring you the Iowa battleships back, mm. which I oh, did I screwed that up last time. Finish off those last units. Good. Pretty happy with that. Pretty happy. Right. The next thing I want to do is try and use its its anti uh, ship missiles there with its over the horizon abilities Let's see if we can finish that off look at that haha <laughs> oh ain't it good fun smoking beautiful work beautiful work mr yung yang whatever your name is uh, so what we're going to see, uh, this may work, this may not work. We've got a guy over here. Let's just see how many kilometers he is away. We've got a bad guy over here. He is 130 miles. He's too far away at the moment. So we're going to move him closer and see if we can get him to use their anti-ship uh, missiles. Stand by. So I'm just going to use over yeah. the horizon first of all. Yeah, I was looking it up and the rough ideas behind it is, is that you bounce radio waves off the uh, atmosphere back down and then you wait to see how it bounces back ah, and then you can make an assumption if there's something there or not 
Because in the MI8 helicopter, we have over-the-horizon radio, long-range radio that can go for hundreds of kilometres. And, yeah, you bounce it off the atmosphere and how you know filter it. I don't know, obviously, how it works, but it's uh, interesting stuff. So I'm going to go blue, game master, and what we're going to go is see if we can get this guy firing. This may work, it may not. Uh, attack target, over-the-horizon. Our little matey boy here. No, that's the wrong one. And that's our baby. See if we can get these missiles to fire. Yes, look, the flaps have opened. You see what I said? They look. Oh no, they don't look particularly like half fins, actually. They're, I think the fins are folded up at the moment. Yeah, they're all, they're all closer to exosets when they launch, but they they definitely aren't. Look at that. Awesome, man. All four, really? Wow, it really wants that ship dead. Let's have a little look at it. It's faster than the Harpoon by a long shot, but it is also much higher. Uh, I wonder why it doesn't go lower. I'm going to go there, it's much quieter. Let's see if it gets lower. Yeah, it is going lower, look. Yeah, that's one thing I know some, with some missiles is they start higher than they yeah. tend to dip lower. Yeah, in fact, the Harpoon's the same. Right. Skip some time. It's obviously got a long way to go. I mean, let's see how far this shot was. It was 70 miles. It could just be waiting for its uh, seeker active radar seeker head. I think it's radar. Watch That's right. We'll Pick it up and then it'll again. dip down. Watch out. Let's just keep an eye on that. I've got stuck in something here. There we go. Uh, damn, that's being a pain in the butt. I hate it when it does this. Never mind. Is uh, the other ship going to shoot back? It appears not, which is interesting. I'm just going to have a look. So not the Hazard Perry frigate. It's climbing. Two hundred kilo warhead. Bump. I would have thought the uh, Oliver Hazard Perry would have been able to see that, but, but apparently not. Well, the bridge is gone. I've wondered if the ability to intercept missiles is just partially a variable on the missile that's not set, but I'm not sure on that. No, we just doesn't haven't had enough, haven't, haven't done enough data. That is one sunk ship, guys. That is going down. Right, um, now let's make it a fair match. That was obviously unfair. Now we're going to turn it towards a hostile. The hostile will come towards it and we'll make them fight to the death. Uh, we've just got to decide what ship we're going to put it against, so stand by. Right, boy, have we got a fight for you. Uh, so we're putting it up against this little this little brother. The type, is it 54? Uh, let me go and have a look. Yeah, 54A. So we've got a 54A there, Chinese frigate, against our destroyer here. Uh, so the 54 frigate is very, just a, a smaller version. It's got the anti-ship missiles, I think even the same anti-ship missiles. It's the same um, guns there. It should be an equal match. Uh, just a smaller hull, really. Uh, there may even be the same gun on the front. Uh, no, the... Guns and the radars and such are a bit newer, and it does have a little VLS, but at the same time, it is lighter, so... Roger. It's, it'll be interesting. Roger. Okay, yeah, it will be interesting. Uh, they're 30 miles apart at the moment. Uh, the unit on both of them gas engines going as fast as they can. So, we'll see how it goes, I suppose. At some point, they're going to start firing some missiles at each other, so... Current range is... Uh, 30 miles, got a long way to go yet. Let's move forward. When they attack like this, they're not going over the horizon. So they have to see each other. There we go. See how identical missiles. The destroyer fires two at a time. The frigate only fires one. That could uh, be a difference here. And the range they fired at when they became visible to each other was 21 miles, which sounds about right. I wonder why it only shot two that have on set of four. Ah, I guess they're just set up differently. So, is any of them going to be able to shoot those missiles down, is the question. They're not particularly low, but it doesn't appear they can actually defend each other from the missiles, look. So this may be a very short-lived fight. Oh, yes, it is. Scratch it. Stop. The presses. Something's going on here, look. Uh, yeah, the uh, HHQ-16 missiles, they're longer range. Uh, doesn't look like the destroyer can defend itself, which is rather upsetting. Uh, 
Oh, it's not going to defend itself. I hate it when he does this. Wagner! Uh, it defended so itself by launching more anti-ship missiles. Okay. Yeah, some of them just don't work, really. Um, it's definitely not going to work now. SeaWiz has been blown off. Look. Oh, it's very frustrating, isn't it? Uh, but that's just the way it is at the moment. Trading uh, Chinese harpoons. Yeah, I think the uh, the Type 52 might have lost its uh, the the anti ship missile or sorry, the ship to ship missile launcher. Oh, yeah, I was just refusing to defend itself. It's very very annoying when they do that. A lot of the Russian. Uh, uh, what they called ships won't do that either. Won't defend themselves. It's your own fault, mate. Don't complain if you bloody sink. Got plenty of. Um, you can send those bucks. Those bucks can shoot missiles down, and the sea wizards can shoot missiles down. So, his own fault. I've set him on red, so he should be able to defend himself. Right. It's still going though. Another. Uh, oh look! Finally, he's defending himself. Look. Why only now? It must be something. If we miss something, why is he only defending himself? Is it because the arms? Something to do with the arms? No, it can't be that. No, it's just yeah, the programming just went wrong on him for some reason. He can only defend himself now for some reason. Um, I'm wondering if the distance might be part of it, but I'm kind of mm -hmm. doubting it. Shouldn't be. Like though. if it's high enough now, but it wasn't earlier. I think it's just programmed wrong. Which is annoying. At least it can defend itself now, and it's still alive, technically. It's lost its Gatling guns, and it's... it's possibly it's even its um, Chinese harpoons, but we'll see. Should be interesting. Well, there we go. If, right. Oh, good. I, I think we were due a good battle, so... Miss! Is it going to fire again? Not gonna do it. Nope. Stupid boat. So stupid. Again, you kind of deserved it. Weird boat. Slowing down. The engine's gone. It's uh, on diesel only now. Thirteen knots. It uh, take three anti-ship missiles to the engineering yeah. room. Roger. Yeah, they would have exploded right in there, wouldn't they? Both appear to be out of missiles now. It may be a draw. Oh, we're going to get in gun range. We're going to get in gun range. Has either of them got a working gun radar? Well, this one will. This one... Hang on, which one's which? Oh, that's our one that's on fire. The other one, the baddie. Completely untouched, obviously. Let's see what happens when we get in gun range. Right, can we see the other ship anywhere? Distance between them is now only 12 miles. We really should be able to see them. For some reason, I'm being stupid and can't. Superstructure might be getting in the way. Maybe. Yeah, it depends if our fire control. Oh, you see our fire control radar there's broken, look. I don't reckon that's going to work. Oh, oh that's oh, the anti-ship missile. Scratch it, it's firing, it's firing. Oh, that'll be why then. Yeah, that's the anti-ship radar. That's the reason why it stopped launching its missiles. Oh, yeah. I'll see you. Uh, this one can't fire yet. It's not even aiming, look. Ooh, so it's got a better radar, or just a better gun. It's the length range of the gun, isn't it? I am confused. It's just got a better, 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 better range of gun. So I think our eight kilometers must be eight miles. Ah, I can't hold it still. It's stupid, it's gonna use all his ammo up at maximum range. 
This guy's not even in uh doesn't even have any authority yet. Come on, one of those bullets coming down there. There they are. There they go. It's our favourite bit, Daishi. Oh, we've got a hit, we've got a hit. Oh. He's coming back, he's coming back. He's never giving up. Never going to let you down. No. But we are literally going to let him sink. Hit on that front mast, it might actually. Might actually have a, uh oh, it's aiming. It's aiming. Can we get return fire? Yes, return fire. Only one bullet though. A big piece of it just flew off. I think we've hit the fire control radar. I did not no. see this ending this way. Here we go. We just got a hit on this superstructure, I just saw it, just before I flicked over there. That might have sealed the deal. Got a lot of ammo, isn't it? Yeah, it's like... It's got like a hundred and something shells in it. Well, it's including the, uh... The, uh, anti-air stuff, too. That was a hit. It's just not powerful enough to do any damage. Just like we're gonna get in Sea Wiz range. Oh, we got a hit. The frigate's not very accurate. Look how far the frigate is off. Whereas the destroyers... Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Part of it is, is that it... The destroyer probably has a better effective range. Hit. Who's got the most ammo now? Damage to the rear. Damage to the front. Damage to the middle. Oh, that was a good hit. Yep. Taking a lot of hits, but it's not actually getting damaged. Another hit. This has got a damaged front and back now. Another hit. Oh, we stopped firing. We've hit the fire control radar. Fire control radar's on fire. Look. We've just neutralized the gun. The one way fight from now. It's smoking! Oh. oh! Oh, direct hit! The stern. Shows the destroyer's supremacy. Oh, we're both on fire! Our fire control radar's gone, and we're out of, out of ammo either way. Oh, I can't zoom out for some reason. Why won't you let me zoom out? There we go. Uh -huh. Oh. Ooh. I was going to say weather the storm, but... Apparently not. And we're going to see which one's alive now, I guess. Let's wait for these uh, bullets to finish dropping. 
Wow, they both took a bit of a beating. Bearing in mind the destroyer's taken three bloody uh, 83s as well. It's soaked up a lot of damage. And both on fire. Right, let's see if we can work out which one's more dead. This one, the destroyer looks more dead. Yeah, that, that's a big fire. He's down to six knots, but he's still going. He's down to 26 knots. The frigates survived better. He's still doing 26 knots. The uh, destroyer's only down to six knots. So the frigate did win that one. I suspect they just ran, both ran out of ammo or got the radars hit. There's no way really of knowing, but... Hmm. Well, just a win to the frigate, but that's simply... This guy just refused to defend himself against the 8-3s. Uh, so it's his own fault at the end of the day. Anything you want to say about that? Um, not too much. It's it's just a shame that I couldn't stop another missile or two. Mm. Oh, good fun anyway. But uh, next we're going to, I guess, fly an aeroplane against it. So stand by. Okay, we're going to be red. We're going to be a flanker. I'm going to go and see what his air defense is like. Let's get some altitude. Make that up. I'm up. Okay, I remember you were doing eagles most of these before. Wrong way to go, yeah. Spike. And a missile out at over 22 miles. So, that's, yeah, just what we thought. 38 kilometers. Let's uh, try and kill that missile if we can see it. Which we... There it is, down there. Okay. You're concerned this is an export version of the Buck or Gauntlet. It might be a little easier to kill it. Maybe. But you never know what little mods they've made to this thing. Lost it. Where's it gone? We used to find this bird. Uh, it was to the to the uh, 054. Try again. Sorry. Uh, yeah, 054. It's over here. Come on, I'm going to get through your missiles. Spike. Missile away. I must be blind today. I can't see shit. There it is. Let's try and dump that missile. So tough. You're not as tough as that S300 we went against the other day. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. It's all out. Defeated. Oh, missile not defeated! Woohoo, missed! You lose. Oh, Where is 
of that one. Uh, did you see that missile? I saw it. Yeah, we're about 20 feet away. Come on, stop trying to hit me and hit me. Got more maneuverability than our, in, than our F-15. All these really tight pulls, look. Nice. Missed. Over brought some rubber duckies. Hold on. Oh, come on. Cap's winning. Nothing you can do. I'm gonna go for the kill. Supercar. Let's see if he's got a uh, weak spot above him. Maybe on the missiles, but I think the Sea Wiz is able to point up. Watch out, we shall see. Oh my god! Yeah, he's got me. He's got me. Sneaky bugger. Very good, you're absolutely right, yeah. That's um, I mean it's a decent sweet 20 miles, you know, most most planes that would kill obviously, that 20, that missile. Uh, a highly maneuverable flanker here, so. Right. Doesn't use its 100 mil, definitely uses its phalanx obviously. You just charcoal it out pretty fast. guns they are. Wish I had one of those guns. Show him his boss. I think that's a radar lock from the guns. Boom. Right. Yeah. It's got a pretty decent defensive suite. It's nothing like the naval grumbles like we had on the Peter the Great or anything, but uh, it's not too bad. It covers itself pretty well. Uh, good fun. So we've done edge, we've done anti-ground, anti-surface, and anti-air. Anything you want to add to this boat, Daishi? Well, the thing is, usually destroyers, part of it is focused around its torpedo armament, so... Not yeah, I think it's part of the reason why we don't have too many DDs right now. Yeah, there's just not Some much use. There's just not much use for them at the moment, is there? Yeah, like, with the Aegis Destroyers and such, it's like, you got VLS, but, yeah, that's Sunday. Watch up. All right, I'm gonna, I hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you later.